Asahi has grown in size over the last decade, acquiring companies including Tsingtao, Grolsch, and Peroni. Asahi Superdry first hit the markets in 1987, and it is now the company's best-selling beer. Is it worth checking out? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. What up, guys? Yeah, today we have uh, Asahi Dry, and let's just get right into it. And you're going to see this at basically any Japanese restaurant you go to. It is a twist-off, so no bottle opener required. So, you know, if you're into the sushi places or just the Japanese steakhouses, it's nice to know what to expect from some of the Japanese beers, which you might not buy on their, on their own. So we'll see what super dry is to them, and um, yeah, I guess that is about it. So anyways, let us get into the smell. Kind of taste or smells like your general Pilsner. Has that slight citrus, the slight citrus notes to it. And it's not, it's not super, it's not like terribly crisp at all. It's got kind of that, um, almost a, a, that wet bread smell a little bit going on, which you'll get in some Pilsners that's, I don't know, it's not my favorite. But slight citrusy, you got the little weediness kind of going on. Maybe a little bit of like peach, if you like smell a, a peach skin, you get, you're getting some of that, but... That's, that, that's really, that's it. There's nothing... Nothing too crazy going on, and honestly... I smell it and nothing kind of sparks my interest. So I'm not I'm not gonna recommend it on the smell. It's just nothing like nothing's that great it's popping out. But I don't know. Let's see if the taste can change my mind. So let's get to the taste. It definitely has that a dryness to it. Kind of like like a dry Champagne because it still has some of the some of the carbonation in it, so it's not just like a dry wine. Um, and the taste is a little better than I was, I guess, thinking going off the smell. It's a little is a little nuttiness to that dryness, so you there's a, a little bit of bitterness too. So you're getting a little hoppy, a little kind of nutty. Um, Maybe a little lemon zest, not super heavy with that, but it's there. But it's there's not a lot going on, but it, it's not a bad pilsner, honestly. Now that I I'm kind of taking it in, it the dryness I think works with that slight bitterness. And the, I mean, you got, you know, it is, it's kind of, if you've had, a, if you had just a general kind of mass produced Pilsner, it's kind of like that. I think it is definitely a step above with, it doesn't just kind of linger the, that, that wet breadish thing that goes on around with some of the other mass produced beers. So it's definitely better than that. The dry crispness, crispness is nice. It, I mean, it tastes more crisp than it smells. When I was smelling it, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm not really getting a whole lot out of this. So, which I think is great for when you're eating the, you know, if you, if you have this at a Japanese restaurant. I think it would work very well if you're using some soy sauce, you get some saltiness. It doesn't try to mask, you know, try to compete with that. So I think it's a, it's a nice blend combination if you're having that at a Japanese restaurant. Or whenever you're, if you're eating anything with it, really. Yeah, just maybe a subtle barley in there. 
it's nice. I like the dry. So the super dry, I think works. So I am gonna recommend it on taste. Now, next is value for price. It's, um, price is not bad. It's, you can get other stuff for, I mean, cheaper, that's for sure. If you just want a general Pilsner, you got your options. It's a little better. I mean, it's better than just your mat, most of your mass produced Pilsners. But, all right. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a half for the value for price. There's some, it's not bad for, for what you're spending it, for what you're spending for it. It's not as expensive as a lot of the other, like, um, micro brews or anything like that. And sometimes, if you just feel like, hey, I picked up some sushi from the corner store, <laughs> um, I want some Japanese beer to go with it, this isn't that bad to go. So, I'm going to give it a half on that. Next is distinction. How distinct is it from other um, Japanese beers or other pilsners? It is, it's got some distinction from just your ma other mass-produced Pilsner, so I'll give it that. As for other Japanese beers, I've only had a couple, so that, it's, that wouldn't be fair to really compare it to the ones I haven't had. In, but in there, I mean, in, in general, against other Pilsners, there are a lot of other Pilsners that I think are done better. But the dryness does work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend it on distinction simply for because the dryness it doesn't the taste doesn't linger, which I think for something like that this is good. So yeah, I'm gonna recommend it on distinction. Now next is drinkability. Let's uh, get another swig of this and check it out. Yeah, then, you know drinkability is not bad. I think I could have a couple of these, not go too far. A lot of times, with if I'm drinking a lot of Pilsners, I just feel like I'm filling up. You know, you got like that that empty just carb. You just kind of like Ugh, after eventually, and so I try to switch it up. I don't just like drinking just straight Pilsner all the time, but yeah, I mean for what it is, I think it, it's fine. So I'm gonna recommend it on drinkability. And now last is would I buy it again? That's kind of a mixed bag. If I was at a Japanese restaurant, I think, yeah, sure, I'd buy it again. And because knowing that it's not, like, it's not bad, and I will enjoy it with what I'm eating, so I would do it for that. Just in general, just to go out into the store and just be like, hey, I feel like a Asahi. I'm going to pick it up. Uh, probably not. I have, I mean, there's way other beers that I'd, what, I'd rather drink. And so I'm going to give it a half just for that. Sorry, I'm looking at the top of the bottle. I feel like it kind of slopes. That might just be my imagination. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to give it a half because I'd get it at a Japanese restaurant, but I'm not going to really buy it again just for myself. So, yeah, that is my review of Asahi Super Dry. If you've had it and, you know, maybe you think differently, let me know in the comments. Maybe there's another Japanese beer you think, or just Asian beer in general. I'm trying to explore more of the Asian beers. Let me know. Put it in the comments as well. And, yeah, that is about it. You can follow me on Twitter, and I got a link to the podcast as well. So, that'll do it. So, for myself and for Asahi Super Dry, take it easy.